This is my message. <laughs> God is so good to thank him. So I got to spend all day yesterday with my room, and it was an amazing day. Um, amazing day. And uh, I'm just going to tell you. Um, I had nothing. I prayed all week, you know, I prayed when I know I'm going to be up, I just start praying and pray in advance. But I had nothing, and that just seems to be anymore kind of the way God is leading me to this trust. You know, that if my heart wants his word, he'll give it. That's what I just have to have confidence in. And uh, I'm growing in that and learning. And But um, I'm going to tell you, it's so an interesting dynamic, but I'm just going to share the praise because it's going to go right into what the, the message. But so on uh, Friday, um, you know, I assumed I was going to be alone uh, for God's, I mean, for uh, Let's Talk. And Thursday night, I just really did not want to go. I just didn't want to go by myself. I just didn't want to do it. I never do. Every single time God has ever sent me alone, I'm sure you know, Hillary, it's not. It's not easy. And I just did not want to do it. And it was so strong that I was actually saying it. I was, well, I, I was praying and thinking, I think I'm just going to cancel. And Deb suggested sending everyone a sermon, you know, like a little note, that, like all the kids, a little sermon that, I, that I'm going to eventually send to everybody. And I kind of was like, yeah, that sounds good. But this wouldn't leave that I was to go. And then I talked to Debbie and she's like, I don't think we're going to be able to be there. But those kids, and I could hear the cry of Christ coming through you. And I do want to say that. I was like, oh, gosh, this is not going to be as easy as I I thought, because I could hear Christ. I could hear him. So that night, I tried with all my heart to cancel. Um, And when I bent over to pick up the garbage, all I heard the Holy Ghost say, show up and be present. Those words were heard as almost as audible. I just went, well, I can do that, you know, with news, with Deb and all that. It just, everything just seemed to pile up and I, I had nothing to give them. That's why I kept saying, but I don't have anything. I don't have a scripture challenge. I don't have anything. I just don't have anything. I think it's better if I send a sermon. But when I heard, just show up and be present, my spirit bore witness. I sent out the text. But then after I sent out the text, I was struggling with just kind of just like, I literally was saying, I don't want it out loud. And then I stopped and I said, what are you going to do tomorrow? That this is so fierce. You know, what are you going to do? Because this was not a normal fierce, like, don't want, I love those kids. I love to be, to go hang out with those kids. This felt so much like, I cannot explain that I literally, when I was brushing my teeth, I said, what what are you going to do tomorrow? Because this is too fierce of a battle. And then the Holy Spirit began to remind me of all the times he sent me out when, when when God's garden group was first birth, when seed sowers was first birth, when uh, let's talk was first birth, it was usually go home. And so I went, and Lord, if I hadn't, and then I was thinking of all the kids this week that the Lord had brought my path, and I was thinking of all that he's done over the years, and I was like, I'll go, but I, you know, I'm really wrestling. So, that. When I was on my way there, I hadn't figured everything out yet, but I was like, how am I going to get pizza right before we start and be there? How am I going to bring the pizza in, the boxes in, the tracks in, and just, and I sent a text to all the kids, basically, like, it's not going to be a normal let's talk, I'll be at the table, um, if you want to talk about the challenge that they were given to read Genesis, and we'll talk about it next time, and if you want to talk about, you know, if you need prayer, I was kind of like, I'm just going to be there, guys, you want to come and say hi was the feel I was trying to give it. And as I was driving, when I got in my car, the phone rang and it was Sophia. She hasn't come in three years to a let's talk. And she said, hey, did anybody respond? Is anybody going to help you? And I said, I don't know because I don't put out RSVP. I just let people know and they show up as they show up. And she said, well, do you need my help? And I, I'm thinking, I don't know. I don't know. If God's leading you, then by all means, come. Huh. And so she said, I'm putting on my shoes and I'm on my way. And there was just a peace. And then 
I got so then I went, well, if she's coming, I need to go pay for the pizza first because maybe she can pick it up. That's usually what Debbie does. So I paid for the pizza as soon as I showed up. Debbie called yes. and said, Hey, do you have anyone to help me yet? And I said, um, I, Sophia, I believe Sophia is coming. And she said, Well, I can get the pizza. And I was like, oh, Do you get to come? She said, I don't know that much, but let me pick up the pizza and bring the pizza. And I was like, Thank you, God. So I got all this stuff in. I sat down. I get a text from Sophia that says, I'm stuck in thought. I'm her place to rent with. And I'm like, Figures, this is just too strange. Everything about this is too strange. So I sat at the table, pretty much thank God. I had, I'm just here in obedience. I'm just here in obedience. If I didn't come, I'd be in disobedience. It's that much I need. But I'm not feeling anything. I have no message, nothing, zero, zero, zero. And then Sophia came and sat down and we started to pray. I was telling her what I was feeling and how tough it was. And then she said something. Oh, gosh. She said something that made me laugh. And it was so powerful. It went to my heart. She said, Mama Bear. I don't think God just called us here to twiddle our thumbs. And when she said that, I was like, well, that's true. So even if all we do is pray, mm -hmm. God is going to use those prayers for whatever happens in that place in the future, whether I ever see it or not. And so before I left, let me backtrack. I said that to the Lord. I know I'm going to go, and I believe you're going to, something big is going to happen. But even if not, I have to know in the spirit something big is going to happen. Because the warfare was it just, I don't even know how to explain it to you guys. I mean, I even woke up with just a heavy heart, you know, like, ah. So I'm going to fast forward just to give you the Reader's Digest version. Walter came, totally unaware that it was a let's talk, and he had a friend, and they sat down. And Sophia said, I'm here to support you. So I don't know that I'm necessarily going to talk to the kids, but whatever you need, you call me, I'm here to support you. And my heart, I was thinking, um, go talk to the kids. <laughs> That's what I need because I feel like I'm supposed to sit at the table. I can't get up and leave. And uh, within moments, this beautiful young lady walked in, and my heart was just like, oh God. And I heard, no, you need, you need to stay put. And I'm like, and then Sophia, right after she said that, she pops up because her back was to the lady, the young girl. And she sits down, and Sophia pops up and uh, goes over and offers her. A track and the track Sophia felt led to give that day was life in the womb. So she gives the lady the track, the man gal, and she says, Would you like to join us? We're having Bible study. And so she comes over and says, This is Sandra, she's gonna join us. Um, you know, we're having um we're having Bible study. Very sweet gal. And she said, But she only has a few minutes. She said, I only have a few minutes before my mom comes. And I said, Okay, so what will I mean, I'm looking going don't want to do this there's nothing there and I go so Walter how have you been and he said good we're making a skateboarding movie and, and I asked the, the new gal Leonie tell me about yourself and then I asked this Cassandra and she said I'm, I'm a freshman in high school and I said okay and then the Holy Spirit said have Sophia give her testimony and I'm like well she did she said she's just here to, you know my brain is trying to work this out and it got urgent have Sophia give her testimony and I was like well she didn't come and then it was so urgent that I said, Sophia, are you open to giving a testimony? And she goes, um, well, how much time do you have? And that's when Walter said, we have till it's over. And she said, well, my mom's still on her way. And she said, okay, well, I'm going to kind of just give you a condensed version. And Sophia, I've heard her testimony many, many times. And I was riveted as if I'd never heard it. She kind of bypassed, she just went into single mom, being raised. I can't tell you anything but this. She got to this one point about having an abortion when she was 15. And this young lady's 15. She's a freshman. And she got to the point about having the abortion when she was 15. And um, the guilt, the shame, how she regretted it, how she wished she'd never done it, how no one was there in the corner, how horrible she felt when she went home. And then she moved when she got pregnant again at 18. She didn't know what to do. But a one person, one voice spoke life to her and said, keep this baby. You will not regret it. When you look at that baby, everything will change. And then Sophia, and I've never heard her give her testimony this way. She whips out the picture of Giovanni and she goes, and this is my grandson from that little girl that I gave birth to. And this young lady, the tears are in her eyes and like brimming over. And 
And I'm going, oh, and then she, and then Sophia goes, do you have to go yet? And she goes, well, my mom's here. And Sophia said, can, can we pray for her really quick? And I said, yeah. So we prayed, and then she got up and gave Sophia a hug and said, you see me today. Wow. You saved me. And Sophia said, what do you mean? Do you want me to walk out with you? She just found out she was pregnant that morning, Friday morning. Whoa. <laughs> Sophia was the first person she told me. And Sophia said, we're in your corner. Wow. Because the whole oh, wow. crux of Sophia's message kept going, one voice. That's all you need is one voice, one person to be in. And I've never heard her give her testimony like that. And she was looking at all of them, just one person. So Sophia said, we're in your corner. This is what this is what I do. I haven't been here in three years. This is not an accident. Then mm -hmm. I called Cassandra that night. We talked at length. She was just like, ah. she she told, she ended up telling me. So he said, I'm sure she'll tell you. So she said, Yeah, I just found out. I don't know what to do. But I, but Sophia, you guys saved me. She said, You saved me. I go, Have you ever seen this there? She goes, I don't go to the community. Mm -hmm. she, usually she walks home. Mm -hmm. But that day, her, and she's in a, she went from a group home to a foster home. Her story is that she said, My story is hers. My story is hers. So seeing how, and then when I told Sophia the warfare, she goes, It always is. Oh, okay. Oh. It, seems more intense that's just when her she said you would not believe the chaos that ensues when you're just you know but i had no clue i just knew i didn't want to go and so later i thought thank you lord for that little bit of strength to go and that God, and she said so he said when i first got your text um she goes i felt stirred to go and then i forgot about it and she goes and at the time i happened to be organizing my room and found a stack of let's talk material, scripture challenges, when God writes your love story, stuff from, you know. So, and on top of that, I want to say two things because I see it every week since we've been at the community center. And I tell everybody, but I haven't told Debbie. I see the Holy Ghost come upon Debbie in a way that is extraordinary. I've never seen before as long as I've known her. We can all be sitting there, we can be praying, and the kids starts coming and you know, she'll look around. And then every week that we go, it's like this. We disappear, she's reaching for the tracks, and I see like this fervent, and she's off. And when you look at her at any point during that time, she is full, the kids are engaged in deep conversation with her, which is fascinating. And sometimes it's at length. I'll look over and she's at the same table. 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, and then the next time you look over, she may be with another group of you. But it's that. So I just thought God moved. I just watched and I was like, what? Well, God is doing something. And then Sophia, I don't know, she somehow she ended up on the couch after the young lady left. This is before we knew anything. And she's talking to this young lady. And she kept thinking, she sure looks familiar. She sure looks familiar in the last 10 minutes. She brought her over to the table and she said, this is Kiani. She used to go to junior let's talk at Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. And she is excited. She's texted me. She's texted Sophia that she's very excited about coming to Let's Talk. She said it's been a while. But again, she, you know, she recognized Sophia. Sophia kept thinking, oh, I know her from. But had this whole full-on conversation with her and found out the last 10 minutes. I used to come to your Bible study at, at, wow. at, at uh, the Let's Talk at uh, Taco Bell. So I saw God do um, amazing things from simply showing up and being present. So, so then, and then she gave, then Cassandra gave her heart to Jesus that night. I gave her the gospel story, and she said, that's a beautiful story. And I said, you know, we talked about sin, and we talked about the need for a Savior. And then I asked a question, I, don't, I usually don't, I just said, would you like to become a child of God, which is just not a normal way that I she goes, yes and she said the prayer and it seemed like it was from the depths of her heart I did encourage her to reach out to Sophia I felt like the words of you know and Sophia said they've never worked with minors before so we need a lot of prayer um her mom she said I was about to be reconciled with my mom and stepdad and my they are married and have two kids and they're solid they're in Sacramento and she goes I don't know how this will change anything she got along great at her group home. Um, kind of reminded me of Josh's story. She missed the kid, actually, because it was like family. But she gets along great with her foster mom and her foster sister. That's extraordinary. Yeah, That's usually not the case. Yeah. And so I, I hear God's, uh, God, I, I really believe God has a call on her life. 
So the next day when I was thinking, well, Lord, maybe that's what I should speak about is show up and be present. That's not where he led me. He led me to everything. Come to the one who has all you need. That's what he led me to. So that's what I'm going to speak on because she came to the one who has all she needs. And he came first to her. And that's always our story, right? He came first. We went in obedience, knowing nothing, that God saw a young lady and a baby. It was more than just the young lady. He spared a baby's life. Um, so just praying, we need to keep her in prayer that God will make sure he continues, uh, which I believe he will. He who began a good work will see it through completion. And if he reached her on the day she found out she was pregnant, he will certainly keep his hand on that baby. We just need to keep him in prayer that God needs her the right support system. And she said, well, I find that the boy doesn't even know. She goes, but now I know that even if he's not in that corner, you guys are. Mm -hmm. I mean, that meant something. Yeah. Yeah. That message that Sophia gave meant something to her. And then how would God have us as a refuge family mm -hmm. um, and undergird and support? And it, was, it was an amazing. So... Um, so this is going to be, and I feel like maybe in days to come, I'm going to be giving this to Let's Talk. Um, but for me today, it meant, I'm going to read you the list and then I'm going to trust the Lord. Because it's a long list and I am not going to have time to go through all of, all, all of it. But I'm going to just go off the top. So Father, I just pray you give us the ears to hear what your spirit is saying. God, that we would walk out of here more in love with you, more in awe of your love, even as we think of this young lady, Lord, she's a representation of every one of us, every one of us sat in a place where we were in such desperate need of you, and you showed up, you called us, you drew us with loving kindness to yourself, God, you, 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 you showed us your mercy, you gave us hope, you filled us with love, that our hungry hearts longed for, God, you gave us a joy, you gave us peace, God, you've led us every step of the way. You've given us your counsel and your goodness. You've given us your forgiveness, your mercy, your grace. And God, when you come, when you come to us, you come with everything, everything, nothing lacking. You come with provision and you come with power. You come with purpose. You come with peace, God. Every time you come to us, you come with all of these things and so much more. And today, God, I, I don't know how to, to get all of this into the next few moments that we have, but you do. And I am going to take that still stance, Lord, that I'm here and I'm present. And I ask that you would release your authority and that you would release your word and that, God, we would just be in awe one more time of you who you are who you are that's what i've been in all of since friday just in awe and i thank you god for i didn't i didn't uh, pull back because i was tired i didn't pull back because it just felt like too much god i thank you i thank you and so let us today when we walk out of here just I have run and be with this awesome God who has everything, every single thing we need. Strength, you're undefeated. You give us promises and you are faithful to see them come to pass. Mm -hmm. You are who we always need. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Even as I think of the song you gave me yesterday, it's never ever a waste when I sing to you. You're just so good. And you bring us into such rest. Today, I pray you do Amen. So I'm going to just give a brief list, and then I don't know which out of this list 
I'm going to go to from there, but I feel like the Lord is saying to start here. Here's what Jesus brings when he comes to us. Hope, hope of eternal life. He brings us, and I have scriptures for all of these, everlasting love, fullness of joy, perfect peace that will last for eternity, everlasting strength. He brings us patience when he comes. He's compassionate when he comes to us. He is exceedingly rich in grace. He comes to us with great mercy. He comes to us with abundant, enduring truth. He offers us abundant goodness. He offers us pardon. He's slow to anger. Not like so many of us think that is quick to anger. He's slow to anger. That was powerful to me. He is great in his eternal kindness. He abundantly generates us. He abundantly renews us. He completely justifies us. He makes us heirs. Wow. I'm an heiress. You're an heiress. His gentleness, not his wrath, not the law, but his gentleness makes us grow. His meekness brings our soul rest. He is faithful to all his promises. He forgives all our sins. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He gives us direction, provision, power, purpose. The greatest gift of all he gives us is the love of God in Christ. He gives us salvation. He gives us sufficiency. And he gives us an abundant life. So God, I, I feel like uh, I'm not quite sure where to jump in, but okay. All right, we're just going to start at the beginning. We'll just go from there. Um, just how how he's led me. Um, I tried to put it in order and I gave up. Not in order that made sense to me. So we're going to go, we're going to start with Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. And he says, and, and this is the thing that I I still, I pray that the weight of it would settle upon you as it might upon me, that this is God we're talking about. This is creator that we're talking about. This is all powerful, almighty God who has never sinned, who is just and righteous in all his way. This is what he says to us, specks of dust. Hmm. For I know, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end or a future. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Hmm. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring again bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. And and this is just the way he gave it to me, is that it's just when Jesus comes into our life he invites us um well here's the thing he does he offers us first his peace he's god mm -hmm. that's the first thing he comes in and isn't aren't we living in a world that has anything but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how many times do we hear i suffer from anxiety depression i'm under so much stress your story was just perfect i'm, I'm just overwhelmed i can't handle it all I can't handle it. And so they go to the doctor and the doctor puts them on medications. They go to a psychologist and the psychologist digs up their past that's been cleansed and washed and freed under the blood. And we got all the issues that come. And Jesus just says, I know the plans. I know. Them. I created you. I know the plans. So give you peace. 
and the future. Mm -hmm. Not a stress-laden, anxiety, overwhelmed future. That's not the future he came to give us. Mm -hmm. He said, I came to give you peace and an expected and a good end. And then he goes on. So it's then he goes on in 12 and he invites us um, to call upon him. And this is God we're talking about. He calls us to call upon him. He invites us to pray to him with the promise that he will hear us and respond. Oh, I mean, I know this, but I'm telling you, it's just gone. So, it's gone so deep in the last 24 hours. Like, this is what he invites us to. Mm -hmm. This is communion with the living God. Come, pray. And his word, this is something he kept saying to me like a, like a chorus all, all last night and this morning. This is a promise. <laughs> Everything in this book is a promise. He doesn't have to say, I promise you. He is the promise. He is the promised Messiah. He is the promised word. Everything he says is as good as done. So when he says it, it's a promise. So he invites us, specks of dust, to come to him, to pray to him, and he promises that he'll respond. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, just this idea that God is like, you know, I, I, I want, he looks out at us and he sees us striving and anxious and heavy laden, and he's like, would you come? Because I want to give you peace. I have future for you. And it's not this. It goes right back to you. It's not this spinning in circles. I have a future. So just come to me. He doesn't, he doesn't look down and go, those people are a mess. Man, I, I'm done with them. It's the exact opposite. The more of a mess we are, the more his heart is yearning to step in mm -hmm. and say, I can fix this. I'm inviting you. Call on me. Just call on me. Just call on me. Pray to me. And I'm going to answer you. And then in 13, he encourages to seek him and to search for him with all of our heart. Because I just look for me. Mm -hmm. No matter where, where you're at in life, no matter what situation you're facing, look for me. And you'll find that man. I'm, I'm never going to leave you. So he encourages us to seek him and to search for him with all of our heart. And he promises that if we do that, we will find him all the time. All the time. This is God we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. This is not just some person. This is the mighty God. Mm -hmm. Seek, search, listen. And, and then in 14, he promises it. He mm -hmm. promises that he will lead us out of captivity to all that enslaves us. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Does anxiety enslave you? Does fear enslave you? <clears throat> Pride. You, you can go down the list. Selfishness, greed, whatever. God is saying, is in your story. I see that's a mess. That's not the way to go. If you call me, I promise that I'll lead you out of that captivity that you're in right now to everything that enslaves you. And I promise that I'll gather you from all the places and that all the places that you've been scattered to and he will remove from us. This is the ultimate. Um, he, so here's, I'm just going to read it. He promises to gather us from all the places and prompt that, that we've been scattered to and he, that sin has taken us to. And he promises that he'll remove us from those places that we went to because of our sin. There, that he prompt, so we got there because of our sin. And this God of ours says, but I promise to remove you from that. I mean, that's all. He just, I, I don't, I, you know, I, like I said, I've walked with God many years, but this is, I feel like I'm just in a bucket of, a deeper awareness is who he is. And he doesn't do it because of anything we've done. Other than he says, I'm your help. All I need to hear is you call me. Mm -hmm. All I need is for you to look for me. And I'm right there. I'm on it. 
and I'm going to free you. I will free you. Um, and then he not only frees us, but he brings us back to his original plans and purposes for our life. So no matter how far off the track we get, when we call out to when we realize it, and there is so many scriptures, and somebody set it up here today. I think it might have been Easter, no matter how rebellious, that was even part. You know, stiff-necked, he called his people. There is chapter upon chapter in scripture when he said, even still, if you turn to me, I'll be right there. Now, who does that? That is a love that we do not understand. But always, never once, never once in here so far have I seen someone genuinely cry out to God and him say, forget it. Never once. So this is God, and he invites us into this peaceful future. He, he invites us to, to commune with him, and he promises to answer us. He invites us to look for him, and he promises that we're going to find him. No matter what situation we're in, all we got to, just what you did through your through your service. You could go to the left or right, but you kept your eyes fixed upon him and you have the peace that he promised because he's faithful. He cannot go against his word. But the, but the power is that no matter how much we mess up, God's desire is to bring us back mm -hmm. to his original plan. Yeah. I, nobody else can do that. There's not a single person in the world that can do that for us, but God. So this is this is the God that invites us. This is it's it's powerful. Now we're going to go to Jeremiah thirty-one three. <clears throat> the Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, because of my love for you, that's what that means. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. Not with a whip. He drew us with his love. Mm -hmm. And he lets us know, I have loved you for from time from the, the moment time was created, and I will love you forever. And because of that love, I have drawn you with love and kindness. So it's interesting, as I spoke to this young lady, and, and what how God has lately been just showing me, just tell them about my love. You, you know, the love will expose the sin. When someone comes to you and says, you know, all what they see in you, and if you've been healed, right, <laughs> then you what you're convicted, right? And God is coming saying, Look, um, it's important that of all people, my people understand how much I love you. And I think it's probably the hardest thing for the people. One of the young ladies said on um, Friday, she didn't feel worthy to be loved. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so I think all these things were, I didn't realize it, but when I, when he took me on this, I was like, this is profound. He draws us because he loves us and he wants us to be with him in spite of our icky, ugly mess. Mm -hmm. He looks at us and says, but I want you with me mm -hmm. because when you're with me, we can clean all that up. We can take care of that mess. And I got some really good plans for you. This is the God that we worship. This is who he is. And then, of course, we see John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. This is his love that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. So he gave, for God so loved the world, that he gave love to the world in his son. And then, he made it very simple. He just said, whosoever, who would ever just believe would find life in the world. There are no hoops to jump through. It was just about receiving the love. 
acknowledging the God on the cross. It's 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 just it's just so mind. So what do we get? We get hope. We get a future. We get a God who hears. A God who shows up. We get a God who restores us. We get a God who has loved us, and He's the one that drew us. And then Psalm sixteen eleven. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Mm -hmm. God promises, when we come to him, he promises to show us the path. Mm -hmm. That's such good news. Mm -hmm. And we know Jesus said, I am the Lord. I am the truth. We know what he's promising us here is Christ. He's promising. I promise that I'm going to show you the path of life. You, you speck of dust. You need me. But I want you. <laughs> I desire you. And he promises that in his presence, we will find fullness of joy. Not just joy but fullness of joy. And he promises that we will find pleasures forevermore. And that word starts speaking to me yesterday. Forevermore. At his right hand. This is the God. When we come to him, this is what he gives us. Mm -hmm. He gives us hope. He gives us an ear. He gives us the eyes to see him. He restores us. He gives us joy and he gives us pleasures. Who wouldn't want that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, it just is a bad act. It made me, and I'm sure you all probably have this happen, made me want him again, again, and again. Like feeling like, wah, you know, I mean, I've known this in measure. But when you go through this, it's like, wah, who could say no to such love? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who could say no? And then we move to John 14, 27. And he says, uh, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I, give I unto you. Let not your heart trouble, neither let it be afraid. Mm -hmm. Jesus promises, promise to leave us with the very same peace he walked to the God. And he promises that that peace that he gives us will keep our hearts. This was this is where I just had to kind of camp out from being troubled. Only his peace can do that. You experienced it. We've all probably experienced it here at different times in our life. When the fear began to, I mean, I think of Wendy in the hospital, and man, mm -hmm. it was uh, nothing short of a miracle. Mm -hmm. I was like, who is this girl? Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I literally was. I didn't hear cry. I didn't hear like, I heard nothing. She just had peace. Mm -hmm. You had peace. We've all gone through things where if it weren't for the love of God, we could not have peace. And we live in a world in scary times. And God says, yeah, but, but I am giving you. He didn't say, come by it. He said, I'm giving you my peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. All you have to do is come. And when you come, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you fear. I'm going to trade your fears. I'm going to trade your, your, your trouble for his peace. What a promise. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Just, it just, it, I, I'm just, he, he, he leaves me in awe. And, and I, kept, I, kept, 
I kept going back to the young ladies. And this is all she got. I know this is what she got on Friday. She got, I mean, it's really all a package deal, right? But this is all that she got, a God that heard her, a God that saw her, and a God that she saw, and a God that she began to speak to, and, and a God that drew her with cards of loving kindness. I mean, this is hers. This is ours. This is what God told me the other day. And I, when I was coming down the stairs praying about something, he said, you understand that I'm all you'll ever need. That the resources you just have to ask, they're in a closet in heaven, and I just take it out and give it to you. I mean, it's it's that simple, just ask, it's yours for the taking. That's the words he gave me, and I was like, Oh, that's because I know what it is. These are my promises, they're yours for the taking. Mm -hmm. Wow! So, Isaiah 26 3 and 4 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting mm -hmm. strength. It's one of my mom's been one of her favorite verses since I was a kid. But God offers us then not just peace, his perfect mm -hmm. peace. There's nothing else in that but peace. Mm -hmm. Rivers of peace that overwhelm us. He offers us perfect peace. But it is given to those who keep their mind fixed on him. I mean, these things are just, it's within our capability to just say, Jesus, I'm, I want to keep on him. It's not work. Mm -hmm. It's just, let me think about you. Let me think about your goodness. And then it says, um, and then it says, um, God promises to give an everlasting, never-ending strength. Mm -hmm. But here's something I noticed that I never noticed before. It's to all those who keep trust. Because he's saying, you can't have this everlasting strength without trust. It's impossible. This strength is only imparted as we trust in him. But if we trust in him, we get this is all we get so we just basically show up with nothing and he says this is yours just it's yours for the taking this is what i want to give you so now you either take it or you don't but this is available mm -hmm. to you today something about the way he's still giving it even as i'm giving it to you that i feel like i'm listening I feel like i'm sitting there i'm like yeah i want all this i want all this so help me to keep trusting you. Psalm 86.15. This is, this is God again. Mm -hmm. This is how tender, how loving he is for us. 86.15 says, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long suffering and plenteous in mercy mm -hmm. and truth. God is full of compassion for you and for me. He's full of compassion for us. When he looks at us, he feels compassion. He sees that we are so limited. We are so limited in our understanding, in our strength, in our love, in all these things he's offering us, it's because we're so limited. Mm -hmm. He's so full. Mm -hmm. So where we stop, he picks up. So God is full of compassion for us. He is gracious to us, meaning that he gives us things we don't deserve. Number one, he gives us Jesus. He's patient with us. That's the part that I'm like, ah, ha, ha. nobody will ever be as patient with us as he is. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. How many times have you said, Lord, oh gosh, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to do this. And then you find yourself going, oh God, help me, Lord. I don't, oh, at what time, Lord, are you going to just bring the hammer down? And he doesn't want to bring the hammer down. In fact, what I've learned through just the last 24 hours, and that, you know, you say these things, it's like, yes, I knew that. But I feel like I know it's deeper. Like, 
so much deeper today that I feel like I didn't know it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so when I kept hearing him say, look, I, when I every time see a truly repentant heart, I can't wait to pour out my mercy and grace. It's not that he wants to go. Now, before I extend that, we need to have a little chat. When he sees our sorrow and he sees our heartache and he sees our struggle, he sees, we agree with him. What we're doing is not okay, God, what, or, or our thought process or the anxiety that we're going through. I mean, all of that, it, he does not, all he wants to do is as a father, he wants, he has compassion, he wants to comfort us. Amen. He wants to soothe us. He wants to pour out, shh, 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 it's okay. It's okay. You forget. It's that simple. It's amazing to me. Nobody will ever be as patient with us as he is. And then he offers us mercy, meaning I'm not, I'm not delight, I, I'm not like eager to punish you. That's the last thing I want to do. That's why I went to a cross. Well, that cross says the last thing I want to do is punish you. The last thing I want to do is be separated from you. Mm -hmm. That's what the cross says. And somehow we've made it something else. Mm -hmm. he doesn't want to give us the punishment our every sin deserves he's the one that we can go to to get the truth all the time that's what that says all the time mm -hmm. and his truth is at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day his truth is I am in your home and that's the and I'm in your home I'm always going to be in your home I don't require you to be like it's not like this. I gotta be perfect or God's gonna be angry with me. I gotta be perfect or he's not gonna. No, all he wants is a right heart. That's all he wants is a heart that says, I'm not perfect. Man, I have messed up. I've got this going on and that going on and pride in my heart and this and that, God. And he said, I know that. <laughs> That's not a surprise. But I'm glad you see it. And I'm glad you want to be free from it. And I'm here to free you. Nobody will ever be as patient with us as God is. Second Peter 3 9 will also bring this out. I mean, there's just so much. I mean, every time any of us get up here, they can. Second Peter 3 9. He says. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come mm -hmm. to repentance. Mm -hmm. Man. You see, God is not in a hurry to punish us. That's the thing I kept hearing is this is not a God who is in a hurry to punish us. That's the last thing he wants to do. But he is willing to suffer along with us. So this does not mean that he turns a blind eye at our sin. This does not mean that he doesn't, you know, that's just what these people are going to do. No, he, he, he suffers through our sin. And he sees how our sin is destroying us, that which he loves so much. And, and, and those of us that have kids, we know when we see our kids, just we just, it breaks our heart when we know that the choices they're making are going to bring suffering into our life. Mm -hmm. Imagine a holy God that looks down at us, even those of us that want to follow him, you know, and we still have this will to contend with, right? So he suffers long with us, with all of our, but he is willing to suffer long with all of our rebellion, all of our rejection of him, because he doesn't want to spend eternity without us. Mm -hmm. He, he's flipping it for me. It's not just he doesn't want you to spend eternity without him. It's flipped for me. It's no, I don't want to spend eternity without you. That's the only reason I went to that cross was to get you. <laughs> there was no other reason for me to go to that cross but to get you. And I, I, you needed to understand I was willing. I loved you so, I loved you so much. I was willing to die for you. So I can get you. 
He doesn't want to spend eternity without us. He wants all men to see the devastating effects of their sin and turn away from them in true repentance and come to him. Do you understand? That's all he's looking for in any of us is a heart that will repent. When we miss the mark, we just go, oh, oh, oh Lord. And we turn back and he's like, I, I got you. It's not a complicated, it's not a do penance, it's none of that. When the heart is truly sorry, this is not just an arrow prayer that says, oh yeah, man, I'm sorry, and now I'm going to keep doing it. I just want to make sure my record's clean. It's not clean when you go to him in that in that manner. I will tell you right now, it's not clean. They're all still there. <laughs> you just turned your back on them and on him. But if we turn and we face our sin, God will be in a hurry um, to forgive us. Um, let's see. Okay, Lord. Um, okay, so I am going to do this first. Romans 2 4. This is just the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg, but what we get to it. Romans 2 4. I'm going to do three. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doeth the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Mm. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads men to him? Yeah. It's just... I've read it a million times, but it doesn't say the wrath of God or the punishment of God or the law of God. It just says mm -hmm. the goodness of God is what leads me to. So I was like, wow, God. Not mm -hmm. by anything we've done. We've done scriptures say that, and maybe if I have another opportunity, that will come up. But, um, and it's, it's interesting. Or despises thou not the richness of his goodness? I mean, it's rich. His long suffering is rich. His forbearance is rich because his desire is that we would repent so he can, can pour out all these promises that he's given. That's it, it. It's his goodness, not his wrath, that leads men to repentance, to come to him in sorrow for their sin. Too much, I can't go there, but um, I'm gonna just okay. I'm gonna go to Psalm. There's um, I I I would encourage you to take a take a peek at Nehemiah nine seventeen, um, and I'm just gonna say this. It says um, and 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 really read the whole chapter because what you're gonna see is everything I just spoke about consummated there. Actually, my Lord, let me look at it. I, I think it's a very long chapter, so I probably don't have time, but um, mm -hmm. what tra chapter did I say now? Nine, yeah, it's a very long chapter, so um, I just encourage you to read it, and what you will see over and over and over is God saying, take this and come to me, and over and over there's a repetitiveness here of when they turn, he would go. When they turn, he restores. When they turned, he forgave. When they turned, they received his mercy and their, their grace. But it is a repetitive. And then I gave you, and then you had rest in your return. Then you cried out to me, and I was there, and then you turned. And then you did this, and I was there, and then you turned. It's repetitive. It's like a drum roll. But the drum roll for me is, and I was there. When you cried out and turned away, when you saw your need for me, I was there. That's all he wants. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to go into that today. But what I will do Psalm 117 2. and um, no, actually, we're gonna go to Joel 2:10 because that's gonna make it. It's gonna make it a little more. Joel 2:10 will say what I have to say better. It encompasses all of this. Joel 2.10 says this. The earth shall quake before the, the earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, 
the sun and moon. No, sorry, I said 11, right? You said 10. Oh, I don't know. I think I have the wrong one. Hold on. Um, hmm. Maybe it's 110. Is anybody, it's the part that says range your hearts. Here. Okay. Well, uh, I kind of really feel like we need that first. Can someone look that up? Well, I'm going to read it because I, I just I have got the wrong reference here. Um, here's what the verse does say Rend your hearts and not your garments, and turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repent of him of the evil. So I just, it, I don't know where it is, but I, I have Joel as my reference here. Maybe I just quoted it. Um, Joel 2.13. Oh, 2.13. That was close. Oh, I think I want to start in here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it says, the earth shall quake before him, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon be dark, and the stars will, will withdraw their and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, and his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can hide it? Therefore, or who can abide it? Therefore, also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. So he's saying, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Turn to me with all your heart. And with fasting and with weeping and with mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments. I'm not looking for some religious beauty. I just want you. I just want your heart. Mm -hmm. And turn to the Lord your God. And here's what he says when he describes why we can turn to him. He's gracious. He gives us what we don't deserve. Mm -hmm. He's merciful. He does not give us what we do deserve. He's slow to anger, and he is of great kindness. And he will turn away from bringing that, that judgment when his people turn. Mm -hmm. There's nobody like this God. Mm -hmm. He so longs for us to turn to him so that we can experience his grace and his mercy. He is not easily angered. He offers us his great kindness and loves to see us spared of all that will harm us. He loves to see us spared. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to end there. Um, and I'm no, actually I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back. And I'm just going to go down this list as a closing list. So we didn't get to all of it, but there are scriptures for all of these. Um, oops. Sure yeah, we get hope. This is what our God offers us. All who turn to him, we get hope. We get an everlasting love that will never end. We get fullness of joy. I'm going to say we. We get perfect peace that will last for eternity. We get an eternal, everlasting strength. We get his patience with us. We get his compassion toward us. We get his exceeding rich grace toward us. We get great mercy. When we come to him, this is what we're met with, his compassion. When we struggle and share our stuff, we get his compassion. We get his grace. We get his mercy. And then he speaks his truth that frees us into our life. And we see him do what only he can do in his abundant goodness toward us, even in our mess. He steps in and shows us goodness. He pardons all our sins. Mm -hmm. We don't go to a God who is sitting there with his fist clenched, ready to say, I'm glad you finally got here. Oh. Boy, I, you know, young lady or young man, I have got. No, he, he is eager, very eager to, have, to hear our heart so that he's great. He has, we get his eternal kindness. This is the God. We go to him. This is how he meets it, with his kindness. And then he plunges and he wants to regenerate us. He wants to realign us so that we're walking right. That's what he wants to do and only he can do. 
And then he wants to renew us. He renews our mind. He renews our thinking. It's what he does. When we come and we're a mess, he's like, here's what, here's, I hear, I got you. And here's what I'm going to do for you. And we're, we're expecting punishment. Or we're not expecting, to, okay, maybe he won't punish, but I'm certainly not going to be blessed. But we walk out of our time with him. Not only are we not punished, but we've received a compassion and a love and a blessing we don't deserve. And then he says, and you're justified. <laughs> your sin is covered. And you're my heir. So we walk in a mess and we walk out an heir or an heiress. And he's gentle. When we come to him, again, he's, what's going on? He wants to hear our heart. And it's that gentleness. This verse just, I was thought, maybe you just want me to, he's what makes us free. He doesn't break us. He's not harsh. He's gentle. And then he, he, his meekness, when we meet with him, it's, it's what gives our soul rest. So meek. And his great faithfulness, he's so great to all his promises that when we walk out of that time with him, we know he will do what he said. He forgives all of our sins. We walk in dirty, we walk out forgiven. We walk in dirty, we walk out cleansed from every unrighteous thing. And then he gives us direction. Here's what we're going to do. And he provides. He gives us his power, and he gives us a purpose, and he gives us gifts, and he gives us his all sufficiency. And so I am going to end with one last person, one close, and that is I, I think you're the, you actually might have read it, um, Margie, but it's First Corinthians, I maybe it's Second Corinthians. Um, yeah, I think it's nine eight. Is that what she read? But that's the one. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 9 8. You heard it at the beginning, and we're going to close with it. No matter where we are on the mountaintop, in the valley, or somewhere in between, God is able to make all grace, giving us what we don't deserve, abound toward you. Why? So that you always, and it's one of my favorite verses, you probably heard me speak on the but always. Having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of always and always and abounding in one little verse. It's a great IV word. <laughs> so, Jesus, I thank you um, for this word. And I know for me, it's been enormous. I'm just sitting in your presence yesterday, saying, This is who I'm sitting with. And so much more. Lord, you are so faithful. Your mercies are new every morning. Your youth is new. God, I pray that you will have caused this word to speak deep to our hearts today that we have a God who has all we need. We never have to go anywhere else to have any of our needs met. When we come to you, you will lead us. You will guide us. You will give us your peace. You will give us your power. You will give us every single one of your children has a divine purpose, a divine call. And God, you equip us for that call. And we thank you for it. And so, Lord, today, I just pray that the next time each one of us steps into your presence, we will have a deeper awareness of who we're really meeting. And it will forever change us. And we will become like you. Lord, you said that you would give us love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and meekness, and faithfulness, and self-control. And I saw this full circle because it's who you are. And it's who you want us to be. In Jesus' name.